So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick information if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Perfect. Thank you for confirmation, everyone. So, before we get started, let me quickly introduce Edurica Masterclass community with you all. So, this community of masterclasses was started back in 2019, and since then we have been closing into almost 32,000 members so far. So in these master classes, we conduct multiple webinars and live events on different topics, including blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data, and multiple front-end and back-end development technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free of cost, so there are no hidden charges involved here. So as a part of a discussion here today, we are we have gathered for our discussion on top of big data tutorials. So here we are going to discuss on the components of big data, what exactly it is, and then we are going to talk about what exactly is big data, big data as an opportunity, and then the problems in encasing opportunity here, Hadoop as a solution, and Hadoop ecosystem itself, and then we are going to talk about the hands-on, if possible. So basically, what exactly big data is? So big data is what? Big data in simple layman terms, it's required for processing large amount of data. Now, for a project to be classified as big data, we need that project of having more than 1,000 GB in size. Then only it is going to be considered as a big data project. Right? So any, any data size having less than 1,000 GB is not going to be considered as a part of big data project. And big data is what? In simple layman terms, it's a process of Reducing the time required for processing large amount of data set. For example, let's say for processing, we need, let's say, we for processing, let's say 100 GB of data, we need 10 days. So instead of doing that, we can reduce the time here to to few hours to few minutes as well by using the concepts and the tools available under big data components. So that is exactly what it is. So Basically, uh, if you remember the last time we had used floppy disk, right? So again, earlier we used to have floppy disk or a CD to store data, right? So let's say they were sufficient to handle the data amount of data at, the, at that point of time. But again, now the data is currently growing at an exponential rate, right? And that's why people are storing data in relational database systems as well. But again, with the increase in the amount of data set, uh, the need for having a better insight of data is also going to be increased. That means now 80% of data is currently generated in terms of the unstructured data formats. That means when we say unstructured data, we mean audio clips, video files, images, and we, these are considered as unstructured objects. And 80% of data right now is all unstructured thanks to all the social media platforms that we have. And that is what big data helps us in, in, in analyzing these kind of unstructured data set. So there are five V's of big data. We have volume. So by 2020, accumulated digital universe of data will grow from 4.4 zettabytes to rate around 44 zettabytes or even 44 trillion gigabytes, as we can see here. And by next four years, it is going to be increased to 100 zettabytes on a per month basis so and that has been an exponential growth in terms of amount of data being generated on a per month basis all thanks to 4g revolution which happened back in 2016 and because from that point onwards the data has increased multifolds right then we have variety so in terms of variety we have to so basically here we focus the data in terms of different coming in different formats so Variety means what? Now, data is in different formats. Now, we have the structured database, we have the semi structured, we have unstructured data set as well, correct? So, basically, in terms of all structured, we know we mean RDBS, we need DBMS, like right, uh, databases. We have semi structured, like we have emails, CSV files, we have JSON scripts, XML files, and then we have unstructured, which is basically all the multimedia elements. And then we have velocity. So velocity, that means the rate at which data is currently being generated. So we know that in terms of mainframe, client server, internet, mobile social media platforms, again, they all are generating humongous amount of data on a per second basis. They all are generating humongous amount of data on a per second basis. And 
that's why again in terms of the status update here in terms of the instant messages we have to make sure that we do have the system to handle this much of data and that too which is being generated at an exponential rate and that is what again is handled by beta data component itself and here we have value so basically when we are doing something we have to first of all before we even start doing something we have to evaluate is that worthwhile that means if we are going to invest time in doing that activity is it going to be worth it right so if that so that is why we have to also evaluate the value that means what is the value of data that we are going to value value of information that we are going to get from this data set if the if the value is not going to be higher than the time and resource invested in solving and mining the data then that then then there is no use of big data there right so value has to be there else it is not going to be feasible for us to mine the data right so now we have big data as an opportunity so big data again analytics is cost effective because again it so it allows us to store it allows us to store humongous amount of data set right it has multiple opportunities in terms of the next generation of products because again here for creating something for the r d part we have to make use of multiple data so like we have to take care of the data being generated in automated in, in automotive industry in healthcare where we have humongous amount of data already already just being there and then we have to make sure we are be able to provide ways to analyze information quickly and make decisions we should be able to improve services and products as a part of evaluation of customer needs and now the problems with encasing opportunity here is so the first problem is we have a huge problem in storing exponentially growing huge data set so data generated in past two years is more than the previous history in total that's something to say and again by by again by the next year itself so again it says 2020 but again by next two years it is going to grow more somewhere around 80 zettabytes approximately it is that means within next two years and that's why it has to be generated and the second from statement we have it is going to be structured for example here we have to have a structured organized format that means data needs to be again different formats in terms of rdb data sets here we have a fixed schema whereas in terms of the semi structure we have partial organized data which lacks formal structure and then in terms of unstructure we have all the multimedia files here so now we need to have different ways of analyzing the, or, and handling different files here. and that is what we have to make that is what we have to focus on by using big data so how hadoop is offered as a solution here so basically hadoop allows us to dump any kind of data across the cluster and again, Hadoop basically has two main core components. We have HDFS, which refers to Hadoop distributed file system, and then we have MapReduce, which refers to processing. So it allows us to parallelly process the data stored in HDFS. All right. And then we have MapReduce. So MapReduce is basically used in combination with technologies like we have Spark. So Spark is basically used for giving us the access to a real-time processing of processing real-time stream of data set. for example we have data streams right so that is what we can analyze by using the spark streams so let's discuss on that so here we have sgfs so first of all if we talk about sgfs and sgfs is what it's simply a distributed file system so basically here we can create a level of, of abstraction over the resources from where we can see the whole sgfs as a single unit and SGFS has two core components, the name node and data node. So name node is the main node that contains metadata about the data stored. And then we have the data node, which are simply commodity hardware in the distributed environment. So basically on a name node, we can simply create multiple data nodes because at the end processing is something that has to be done in a, in a cluster. We, don't we are not going to do the entire processing in a single go, correct? By a single system multiple systems they all have to work parallelly to work on data processing and that is what is done by sgfs here we have a master node which simply define okay how many clusters are going to be defined how many clusters are going to be created and that's how it's going to work so name node is a main node and the actual data is being stored across different data nodes here that's how it works 
All right, so next we have storing data as a solution here. So when we talk about the main problem as storing exponentially growing huge data set, the solution for that is SGFS, which is basically a storage unit of Hadoop. It is a distributed file system where we can divide files into multiple input data where we have a smaller chunk and which sorts it across the different clusters. And then we have scalable requirement. So basically here we are going to take the requirement in terms of the MB files. For example, here we have a, low, a large file as 500 MB files. So then we are going to divide this into smaller packages and then we are going to store it in different nodes so that we can process it as quickly as possible. And then we have the second problem of storing the unstructured data. So how that is solved by using SGFS. So SGFS allows us to store any kind of data. So it can be structured, semi-structured or unstructured. So basically it forms the worm theory as in write once, read many. So no schema validation is done while dumping the data set. So the users, they can write data and again, multiple read operations can be performed on the data that it has been written on SGFS. And third problem was processing data faster. So the solution was Hadoop map reduce. So it provides parallel processing of data present in SGFS, which allows us to process data locally. That is each node works with part of data, which is stored on it. So let's say if we give a job to process thousand page to a single system, and we give the same job to another system where we have four connected systems and they all are having a capacity of going through, let's say 250 pages on a per hour basis. So the same job is going to take four hours for the system and the same job is going to take just one hour on the distributed system because it seemed like the same problem statement that we had in mathematics back in our school days. If one worker is able to complete a building in 30 days, then how many, that how much time will three workers take to complete the same building, right? So same thing has been done here. We are dividing the work into multiple workers so that they can work faster and then we can get the output as quickly as possible. All right. Now, next we have the Hadoop ecosystem. So as we discussed, Hadoop is basically divided into SGFS and again, there are multiple systems available under Hadoop. So here we have multiple components that we have MapReduce. So in MapReduce, again, we have so basically MapReduce is used for a quick, we can say quick batch processing and that for handling the real-time systems, the same way as Spark. And then we have the Kafka system, which is basically used as a message processing system, along, which is meant to be used along with Spark. So basically for Plume is something that we use for the unstructured and semi-structured data set. And then we store the data on the HFS component. For resource management, we use the Yarn resource manager. And then we have Spark, we have Kafka, we have Mahout so as a part of machine learning libraries. We have Big for scripting. Then we have Edgebase, which is basically used for handling no SQL database. Then we have Uzi, which is used for scheduling jobs here. And then we have Zookeeper, <coughs> which is used for, man for management and coordination, especially critical for Kafka-based systems as a part of complete Hadoop ecosystem here. And suppose if we talk about each and every component here, so Hadoop here is used to provide a scalable solution to store and process huge data sets. Hive is what we use as a part of data warehousing tool. Big is basically used for analyzing large data set and Apache Spark is what we use as in-memory data processing engine. And then EdgeBase is what we use as a no SQL database that allows us to store unstructured data sets, unstructured and semi-structured both. Thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.